Hello everyone, my name is Trevor Bragg. I'm a realtor here in Phoenix and I have a fun topic today that could hopefully be extremely helpful to you. We are talking about the five best ways to be building equity in your home when it comes to upgrades around the house. There's obviously other ways you can do this, but when it comes to actual physical upgrades you could be doing, remodels you could be doing to your house that add value, that's what we're gonna get into today. So maybe you just bought a home or maybe you're thinking of selling a home in the future and you wanna know what upgrades could I be doing where I'm going to get a return on that upgrade. Because there are plenty of things you can do to your house that don't actually add value to your house when it comes to actually selling. You may go out and spend $2,000 on a pure gold kitchen sink. Well, for most houses, that's gonna add about $0 of value. Because maybe a buyer walks into the house and they don't like the color gold, and they don't care that you just spent $2,000 on your kitchen faucet. So when it comes to spending big money on upgrades around your house, you wanna make sure you're doing your due diligence to make sure sure that you make the right decision. And one of the best things you could be doing right now, I know it's kind of a unique market where sellers, they're probably thinking they might be in their home for a little bit longer than maybe they expected. Maybe you were hoping to sell now, but realizing that purchasing is gonna put you in a worse financial situation, you're gonna stick it out. So maybe you wanna make an upgrade, uh, remodel a part of your house where you can live in it for a few years, enjoy it, and then sell it and get a return on that enjoyment of an upgrade that you just got to do. In a sense, you got to enjoy that upgrade for free. I think that's an extremely smart thing to do is when you're a few years out from selling, upgrade it now so you get to live in it and enjoy it and then sell it for a profit in the future. So what are some things you could be doing? And the only way to break this down is to look at what actually increases the value of your home. So obviously the housing market plays a factor, but what actually increases the value of your home is a buyer's interest in your home. Your home is always gonna sell for more money if you have five buyers that are interested in it versus one buyer. And so what I wanna look at today is what are buyers actually looking for in a house? So I work with tons of buyers and sellers here in Phoenix. I'm gonna look at those experiences from the buy side to say, when they come to me and say, here's what we're looking for in a house, what are the most common things that they are asking for? And some of these you probably know. The number one thing is going to be an updated kitchen. That's something that every buyer, especially the women, when they walk in, that's what they care about. What does the kitchen look like? They wanna know if it is the bright colors, if it's the granite countertops, if it's all these things. So we're gonna factor that in. We're gonna get into what upgrades you could be doing for that, some on the cheaper end, some on the higher end. Number two, they want an open floor plan. And this you may not be able to change, but we'll get into an upgrade that can actually help that feel. Number three, you'll hear a lot of people talk about some sort of nice backyard, whether it be size of the backyard, being a key factor or an area for their dogs to go out and play or their kids to play or a pool, things like that. Just in general, a nice backyard. And the fourth thing is going to be updated floors. An interesting thing I heard is that most buyers can decide if they want to place an offer on a home within seven seconds of being in that home. That's all it takes to make maybe the largest financial decision of their life is seven seconds walking through the home. And one of the main things you'll see in that seven seconds is going to be the floors. And then they're probably gonna walk into the kitchen and then they've almost already made their decision if they want to buy your house. So if we're looking at those four things being the most common things that I'm seeing, and I think if you do any research, you're gonna see that's the most common uh, answers people are gonna give on what they are looking for in a home besides you know square footage, location. You can't affect those, but you can affect these. So how can we use these to make upgrades on your home for when you sell to get more demand for your home and ultimately increasing prices. A few things I don't recommend is to ever overspend on any of these. Don't ever go with the top tier option unless you're really picking for, I wanna use this for my enjoyment and maybe we'll get a little bit less of a return in the future. But one key thing to factor is look at your neighborhood. If you're in a $300,000 house neighborhood, going out and spending 60,000 on your kitchen, there's no chance you get a return on that. If you live in a $2 million neighborhood and you're able to spend 60,000 and upgrade your kitchen, you're gonna increase your return two to three times of what you paid for it. So make sure to look at where you at in the neighborhood. Do you really need to get those top tier upgrades or do you just need to get it to the average or slightly above average? Usually being the most expensive in your neighborhood is not always the best thing when it comes to upgrades. So keep that in mind as we talk through these. So first off, the most important thing, kitchen upgrade. What should you be doing to your kitchen to upgrade it and how can we try to keep it within a price range that makes it where you get a return? So one thing that you see a lot of people make the mistake of when they are redoing their kitchen is they go out and spend 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars on a kitchen and their return is maybe 50 or 60 or 70 thousand uh, dollars. It is extremely rare 
to actually find a house where a remodeled kitchen adds $100,000 in value. Most often, a kitchen upgrade for an average house here in Phoenix, which is around $450,000. If you do a full remodel of the kitchen, you may get $50,000 of return. And that's a full remodel, new cabinets, new countertops, new everything in the kitchen, new appliances. You may get $50,000 for the right house for it. And that's if the kitchen was absolutely nothing beforehand. But if you're just doing a one-tier upgrade, you know, you had some older cabinets for micro countertops that looked nice but weren't in great shape, $50,000, you're not going to get that return. You may get $20,000 extra. So what are some actual things you could be doing? My recommendation is to piece it out. Maybe just do one or two of these items, and that totally flips your kitchen uh, into what people would call modern, and someone would walk in and say, this is what I'm looking for in a new kitchen. And the first thing is your countertops. If you have Formica countertops, if you have tile countertops, if you have anything except some sort of solid stone, that is not what I recommend. And that is not what anyone is particularly looking for in the current market. You wanna see quartz, you wanna see granite, uh, you wanna see solid stone countertops. Particularly, my recommendation tends to be quartz uh, for quite a few reasons. Number one, its price is very similar to granite. It's way less upkeep to granite. And in general, the styles that you can get from there are going to be more popular because it is slightly fabricated. Whereas granite is simply a stone and they cut it and hand it to you. Quartz, there's a little bit of it that's fabricated to get the designs they want and to get that top surface where it's not porous so you don't have to do anything to it. A lot of people do like these quartz countertops, especially the styles you can get. Even if you're picking the cheapest possible option from Home Depot, that's still a really popular option for a new home buyer looking to purchase there. So I do recommend quartz in particular, but granite is also a great option. Just make sure to pick neutral colors of some sorts and make sure it fits your kitchen. If you have brown cabinets, Brown countertops, probably not your best option. Black countertops can be great if it works well with your countertops. And then light colors are always extremely popular. Whites and grays are always extremely popular. And then sometimes tan, again, if it fits well with the cabinets. The next thing you can do that can really turn around your kitchen, depending on what it looks like, is going to be your appliances. That's a really easy fix. You can do all three of your appliances, dishwasher, stove, and fridge. You could probably do that for $3,000 and get them up to to the standard of the community you're living in. If you're in a luxury home, it's not gonna be $3,000. But you could easily spend $750 on a dishwasher, $1,000 on a stove, and $1,200 on a fridge. They're gonna be brand new, they're gonna be extremely nice. Stainless steel is almost always my recommendation, unless your kitchen really fits a specific color, but stainless steel is the most popular option, so I would tend to go with that. Especially if you have outdated of any of these, that's gonna be a quick way to turn your kitchen around. And this is definitely an upgrade where I would say, do this a year or two out before you're thinking of selling so you get to enjoy these new appliances before you sell. That is something where someone walks in, they see a nice new fridge, that's something they're probably gonna make a comment on. I tend to not recommend replacing your cabinets unless they're extremely cheap. If you can paint them, that's a great option, but that's also not too cheap. You're probably looking at a few thousand dollars for that, depending on how many you have. So painting them could be a popular option, but if you have some really nice hardwood cabinets, keep them the beautiful natural color. White cabinets are always the most popular, but again, if it fits your kitchen, grays are also popular as well, and the natural wood would be the last option. If you have that orangish yellow wood, that is not too popular anymore. That is something that could potentially deter people from buying versus having that white painted cabinet. So if you can do that for cheap, that is a recommendation I have. I would definitely not recommend doing them yourself unless you really know what you're doing. That will easily hurt the value of your home if you go out and you paint the cabinets yourself and someone walks in and it's pretty obvious like, hey, they didn't do what they should be doing. That's actually gonna hurt the value because they now have to fix your mistakes. The number two way that's gonna be pretty easy to upgrade your home is to simply paint it. I know this is basic and I know you know this, but paint it neutral colors, especially if you have darker tones in your house. It's pretty rare for a buyer to walk in and prefer the darker tones, even if you love it. If you love it and you have a bright orange in one room and a dark black in another room, if you have things like that in your house, I would recommend painting before you sell it. Live in it, enjoy those colors for yourself, but majority of people are looking for those neutral colors. And it is fairly cheap to do. You can do this for a couple thousand dollars, whereas if your house is painted pink all on the inside, you're gonna lose more than a couple thousand when it comes to buyers coming through and immediately saying, 
I have to do work as soon as I move into the home. That is one thing you don't want to have buyers thinking about when they're walking through your home. You want them thinking, look how beautiful this home is. Look at the great things they've done with it. We can see our family living here. They don't want to walk into an all pink home and say, right when I buy it, I'm going to have to hire a painter and pull out a few thousand dollars. My recommendations are off-whites, light grays, light browns, anything neutral and light keeps the room open, keeps the room bright. Those colors are always gonna be popular. Yes, they are basic. Yes, that's not the special thing you wanna hear, but in general, that's gonna to appeal to a majority of buyers, and that's what you're looking to do when you want to add value to your home. So the paint actually helps your room feel larger. So we talked about open floor plans being a key thing that people like, and this next option is an extremely cheap way to make your home feel like it is an open floor plan, even if it's not, and that's recessed lighting. Even in open floor plans, this is one of the best upgrades you can do. For maybe $100 each light, you can get these installed or learn to do them yourself. They're extremely easy with some of the options they have now. You literally just plug them in, although you'd have to figure out how to do the wiring. But either way, this is a cheap option you can do. I definitely recommend this in the kitchen. A big, bright kitchen is what people want. They don't want to walk in, turn on the lights, and be like, wow, I can barely see anything in here. These recessed lights bring so much light into the room, especially if you don't get a lot of natural light. These are huge because it doesn't make your home feel dark and gloomy. And you can get different settings ones. You can get the super bright whites, you can get the soft whites if you want that feel to your home. But this in almost every main living room is a great upgrade to do, especially if you have some big large lights that are hanging down and making your space feel smaller. I would recommend taking those out and putting the can lights in. That's if you have a not open floor plan. If you have an open floor plan, usually hanging lights and chandeliers are a great option to make this room feel more homey and more spacious rather than a big office space. Whereas if your home is maybe a little bit more closed off, the kitchen's in its own room, the living room's in its own room, having that recessed lights and taking off anything falling down from the ceiling is going to make your space feel so much larger and so much brighter, which is what people are looking for. And that's where that seven second rule comes into play. If they walk into a dark room and the lights are on, that's gonna affect that seven seconds, where if they walk in, it's bright, it's spacious, it is what they are looking for, that is going to really help people's decision in that quick seven second time span. Flooring, so we talked about upgrading flooring. This is obviously a great upgrade you can do and my recommendation when it comes to flooring is going to be the type of floors you put in. Again, this is very specific on your neighborhood and the style of home you're living in. In general, basically any house up to luxury, my recommendation is some of the vinyl plank flooring. This stuff is what people are looking for and you can pick any color you want. The light brown wood is extremely popular. Gray is extremely popular. Even white is a popular option, but the light brown wood I would say is the most commonly desired choice that buyers are going to have. And you can get these for fairly cheap, cheaper than the other options that people tend to pursue such as tile. This is gonna be cheaper to tile and the best thing is they're extremely easy to install. If your floors are flat, you can do this right on top of the floor itself and you can do it yourself. You can literally lay these floors down yourself if you are able to do that. The only tricky thing will be some of the corners and edges will be difficult to cut out. So one thing I would recommend, especially if you're looking for the best return on your profit for this type of project, do all the easy stuff yourself, fill in all the main parts of the floors, leave the surrounding, all the interesting cuts you're gonna have to do and hire someone who knows what they're doing, hire them by the hour, pay them 500 bucks and they'll fix all the little corners to make it look nice. And then you just probably saved yourself a couple thousand dollars on install cost and you're mostly paying for just the price of the floor. So that's something you can easily do. And if you wanna learn how to cut the edges, do that as well. But I definitely recommend the vinyl plank flooring. Now, if you're getting into the super high price ranges, that's where the larger tiles are gonna be more popular. In general, a lot of people do prefer the large tiles if that's going to be a choice between one or the other. The only downside that actually some people are starting prefer the cheaper vinyl plank is going to be the grout. They don't have to clean the grout with these. They're scratch proof, they're waterproof, they're everything you're looking for in a floor and they're the cheaper option. So if you're looking to upgrade floors, that would be the way to go. In general, you don't need to do this in the rooms. Uh, a lot of people are totally fine with carpet in the rooms, but if you have carpet in your living room or if you have some old tile that doesn't look good in the kitchen area, a main area that a lot of people are going to see, I definitely recommend adding in the vinyl plank floors. This is a more expensive, a bigger upgrade, but it's a huge, huge bonus when you're looking to sell your house. And lastly, we'll talk about the backyard. Now this is one where if you're gonna do any upgrade to the backyard, 
don't do it just to sell the house. You can do something small, maybe add a few plants in if you got some dye, or if it's just dirt, you know, make it look a little bit nicer out there. But I definitely don't recommend doing a full upgrade to your backyard if you're looking to sell your home. You're almost never going to get that return. You're looking at probably $20,000 plus if you just want it fully landscaped with pavers and grass and all that great stuff. You're looking at a possible $20,000 plus purchase just to do that and you're not going to get that type of return and that's not even factoring in if you're doing some extra upgrades such as a built-in barbecue or a pergola or a pool all those things you tend to not get the return on value that you're paying for them especially a pool this is a topic we have to talk about adding in a pool to your home you are going to lose money it costs fifty thousand dollars plus to install a pool and rarely do you get that return unless you're in a kind of a perfect price range. If you're in that six hundred dollars to $800,000 price range, you can usually get your return on your pool if it's just $50,000. But sometimes those nicer homes also need nicer pools and you almost never get the return on value, especially if you include maintenance costs. So if you're looking for a return on value, I don't recommend pools. But when it comes to the backyard, this is where Again, I would recommend if you're looking to do this where you can enjoy it for a few years and then sell and get some of that money back, I would recommend doing something nice with your backyard. Adding some pavers right when you walk out, adding some artificial turf or real grass is an upgrade for people, and then some sort of bush or shrubbery around the outside of it. It's just going to be something that someone walks out to and says, this is a well-landscaped backyard. That's all you're looking for. It doesn't need to be elaborate. That is an easy way to get a return on your value. Now, if you want to still get some money back, but you're probably gonna be losing money on the end, that's where things like a built-in barbecue. Yes, people would prefer a built-in barbecue, but that may cost you more than you're gonna get in return. A pool is the same way. Adding in a pergola is the same way. A built-in fireplace, all those things, you really are going to lose money on it when it comes to selling your home for the cost you went to install it, but you will still get some return on value. Just maybe expect half of what you paid. If you paid 5,000 for that built-in barbecue, you may get 2,500 for what a buyer would prefer. Some people don't care at all about the built-in barbecues. Some people love them. In general, you're not getting a big return on those. So those are the five upgrades I recommend you do when it comes to getting a return on your investment. What are buyers looking for? How can you drive more demand for your home when it comes to sell? And I really think these five things are going to be somewhat timeless, at least in the next five to 10 years. I can't see any of those going fully out of style. The white cabinets could be the one where in 10 years, we are moving in a different direction, but for the time being, that's still the most popular option. Unless, of course, you have the hardwood natural colored cabinets that are beautiful don't change those but most people are preferring those white cabinets as of right now so these are somewhat timeless recommendations and these are recommendations that if you do these you are going to see a return when it comes to sell you are adding value to your house make sure that you are always comparing this to your surrounding neighborhood and what they are selling so go look at what are the top three most expensive homes in the neighborhood what did they have as far as upgrades in their house and never go above that if they put in a thousand dollar fridge don't put in a two thousand dollar fridge if they put in the vinyl plank flooring don't go spend triple that and put in the huge tile stone flooring make sure you are comparing to your neighborhood and of course if you're able to do any of this yourself and put in some sweat equity you're going to get a great return on any of these things if you're able to learn how to do them yourself hopefully this is a helpful video on what you can do to add equity to, into your home if you're thinking of moving to phoenix reach out to me i am a realtor here and stay tuned for more videos about living in phoenix